Hey, good day, good afternoon, and wherever you are in the world. My name is Marcel Hyde, channel Marcel Mindset. One, two, three, four. All right, you guys, please hit that subscribe button below. Hit that notification bell because these are episodes that you don't want to miss out on. For those of you out there, if you're lacking in faith, you're lacking in hope, God is there for you. God is willing to guide you and lead you and direct you. Hello, world. And welcome to Marcel Mindset TV. Today, we have two special guests on the show. If you go back to episode one, you remember that we had the CEO of Family Hoops Basketball Organization out in Calgary. Coach Dean, how you doing? I'm very good, Marcel. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for coming back on the show. The people out there are missing you, so we had to bring you back on the show again. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to come back on. Fantastic, fantastic. And now, <laughs> coming to the show, we are truly humbled that we were able to bring this man on the show. This guy is super busy. He's got a lot going on. They say the West Coast is the best coast, and you're going to see that today because we got two of the best from the West on the show today. So I'd like to introduce to the show, Robbie Sahoda. How you doing, Robbie? <laughs> doing great, my man. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on the show. I know you got a lot going on, so truly, truly humbled for you to be here today, and thank you for taking your the time out of your busy day to be here. Absolutely. A pleasure of mine, man. Yes, yes. So I'd like to say, please click that like button below, subscribe to the channel, because these are episodes that you do not want to miss out on. So I'd like to start off by asking, because there's this big buzz in the air right now of this name, you know, because he's out on the West Coast, but we're hearing his name here in Toronto. We saw him on TV the other day playing basketball. So who is Robbie Slahoda? So, yeah, a little bit about myself. I mean, I'm, I'm born and raised in Calgary, but spent majority of my life here. Uh, I went to the University of Calgary for five years here, for the, played for the Dinos. Um, after my university career, I went on to play a, a seven-year professional career, mostly in Europe. After that, uh, I did move back to Calgary full-time, and for the last five years now, I've been in the uh, real estate business, actually. So I built my own, uh, been building my own real estate business, and uh, that's where I currently stand right now. And you know, I still play a little bit of hoops, but um, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, enjoy my time being in Calgary. That's great, and, and you know what, Robbie's downplaying the fact that he was a professional athlete because, like we spoke about in episode one, there's a very small percentage of athletes that make it from high school to university basketball, and Robbie was a professional athlete. He was able to make it from college. Like he said, he was playing for the Calgary Dinos. The percentage of players that actually make it pro are very slim. So he had the focus. He had the discipline. He had the determination. He had the passion to make it to the pros and to the next level. So this guy is dynamite. He has, he's going to say a lot of jewels today that you guys want to tune into, that you guys want to listen to. So, Robbie, I know you said that you transitioned to real estate now. So what kind of influenced you to get into the business world? Well, I just thought it was <clears throat> well, when I was playing uh, basketball overseas, I think a lot of times, um, you know, you get so as athletes, we get tunnel vision, you know, we, we play basketball and obviously as a young kid, I mean, that's kind of what propels you to get to where you want to get to on the basketball side of things. But as you get older, you start thinking about other things, you start thinking about life after basketball. And this is what I tell a lot of the young guys now too, is that <clears throat> it doesn't mean that you don't have to think about basketball. <clears throat> but just have an idea of other things that there basketball will be a small chapter in your life. I know it's hard to believe as a 16 year old kid, 17 year old kid when basketball is everything. Um, but it, 
you know, as I got into my 20s, I started I started looking at what other people are doing outside of basketball. I started looking at teammates, old teammates that are going into different fields of, of just life. And I started exploring those options and starting to see what would fit best with me. So to be honest, I would I would sit a lot of times and 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 look at my strengths and my weaknesses and where I would fit in. Um, you know, the business world made sense for me. I, I think there was a lot of um, similarities in the sports world and the business world and right. especially the real estate. Um, so I looked at that as an opportunity and being able to use a lot of my skills that I was able to develop in basketball. And I was able to use to take that and, 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 uh, and develop those into the business world. And, and I had a lot of friends and family that helped with that as well too. And they were into the, into different parts of real estate as well too. So that helped me kind of learn about the ins and outs of the, of the real estate industry. That's great. And, and I know right now I did a little bit of research. You were top level pro. Now you're top 10 in the game out there in Calgary. So, you know, props to you. Congratulations to you. Uh, you know, you. more prosperity, more success, because you're doing well out there. So, you know, we, we talk about investments and, you know, in this channel, we really want to educate people because I feel like there's a lack of education in high school or the education system per se in regards to like financial literacy, investing. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have so many vehicles for investments. We have stocks, we have real estate. So, why is investing in real estate a good investment? I mean, if you look at real estate historically over, I'm not, and I'm not talking about one to two years, I'm talking about 10 to 20 years down the road. It's always up across the board. If you look at it, right. Um, there's a lot of, op there's a lot of avenues to build wealth within real estate. You know, people just talk about building or buying a property and, and just renting, it out. I mean, that's one way of building wealth. I mean, there's, you know, there's flipping opportunities, there's building opportunities, there's, you know, Airbnbs that, that people are making a lot of money doing. So there's a lot of avenues. Um, I think there's not enough education around it, you know, growing up. I mean, we, we see it, but we don't really know the nuances of, of how to build wealth and actually how to, how to go from step one to, to step five and, and get to that finish line. <clears throat> so I think, I think there's definitely a lot of opportunities in real estate. It's just about having the right people around you to help you with the opportunity right. and help you see the opportunity and, and, and actually go out and get it. Right. Okay. I like that. So there's, there's a ton of opportunities, a ton of avenues <laughs> of real estate that you can get involved in. And if you look over time, the trend, you see how real estate has been very lucrative for a lot of people. So, you know, without kind of giving us the whole course of real estate, cause we know you got to take a course to get in. A lot of people don't have that education piece in regards to, what do I need to kind of get started or even get in the game of real estate? What are some things could be a couple things that, that you would advise people that they need before getting in the game of real estate? Like you mean uh, before purchasing a home before or purchasing a home? Yeah. But let's yeah. say I'm, I'm a client, yeah. you know, I come to you, I got a nine to five, let's yeah. say I'm making whatever X amount of dollars, 80,000. Yeah. And I'm interested in purchasing a home. What would you say to me, Robbie? Well, the first thing I always tell people is, you know, obviously I get their plans and see what they want to do with, with real estate and try to get an understanding of the client of, of what not only their short-term plan is, but their long-term plan is. And then right off the bat, you know, we always talk about getting a pre-approval because a lot of people have these big plans and they don't even have a pre-approval yet in <laughs> place. And a pre-approval is the number one step is before we can even move forward is to get a mortgage pre-approval to see what kind of money the bank is going to give you or what a lender is going to give you and at what interest rate, right? Because that, that really shapes your entire, your, the picture of what you're trying to do here. So that is number one, definitely. And, okay. and obviously having, having the right people around them, working with them, you know, and, and I always tell you, <clears throat> I tell people that all the time is that, you know, make sure you're, you're working with someone that you trust, that you, that, you know, understands how to work the process because, <clears throat> one mistake can be a very costly mistake in real estate. And you have to really understand that, you know, there's, there's mistakes that are always made, but I mean, at the end, at the end of the day, you have to be very uh, diligent in the process and knowing exactly <clears throat> where to go from step, step one to, to wherever you're trying to go to. Fantastic. So make sure you guys are getting that pre-approval and finding yourself a trusted individual in that game, because there's so much money on the line. And we're over here in Toronto. So for all my Toronto people that do tune in, Robbie Sohota is available. You know, he'll plug his contact after because we know nowadays how expensive it is to get into the market in Toronto. So now we got a realtor out in Calgary. If you want to make some investments over in the Calgary area, 
Robbie is your guy. He's that guy that's going to support you. He's going to work his tail off for you. So we got Robbie and he'll plug his stuff after. So I want to get into this question and Dean, I'm going to ask you this question as well too. And I'd like Robbie to answer first, then I'll get Dean to answer. But Robbie, you played pro and a lot of guys, you know, they get to the pros or they don't get to the pros and they're still training. You say, Hey, what, what are you up to? I'm training, right? I'm training. And we're like, what are you training for, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, you have this dream and you're like, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get to the league. I'm going to get to the NBA. And like you were even in pro and then you're like, okay, I'm so when do you know when it's time to give up on your dreams and try something different? Cause you knew you didn't get stuck. You moved forward. So Robbie. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple points of that I want to touch on that. Like, I mean, Number one, I always say is, is self-awareness is such a lost art. Like, wow. you know, there's a lot of people that there, there's a misconception of what reality is and what the, the, what the, their mindset is. And it's not always a bad thing. Like at the end of the day, <clears throat> we tell kids all the time at a young age, and Dean can speak for on this too, is that, you know, you tell kids, follow your dreams, chase your dreams, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what. That comes, that becomes so ingrained in our mind that we forget everything else right so it becomes more of a mindset like if i if i stop then i'll it's a it's a it's almost a shameful thing it's not a shameful thing it's you know you might have to change your processes you know you don't have to necessarily give up on your dream but right. maybe change the way you're doing things or change the way you're going about it and then that way you might see a shift in what you're doing you, you know you're talking about guys who might be training they, they say they're training they're training they don't have a contract or whatever it is Right. But what are they doing in that training? What are they doing outside of training? What are they doing to get a contract? What are they doing to get to where they want to get to? And that's where those tough questions, when you start asking people, you start really digging deep into, you know, what is actually happening. Um, right. and so I think you've got to really um, look at yourself and, and reflect on yourself and see, is this realistic? Um, you know, if you haven't played high school basketball and you're trying to get a professional contract, I mean, there's a, there's a big difference, right? Same exactly. thing if you get into real estate and you don't have a real estate license, it's the exact same thing. So right. there's, you know, there's, there's got to be an understanding with people is that there's a process to get to where you want to get to, no matter what you want to do in life. And it's not just a sling, slingshot to the top, right. no matter what you want to do, you always have a process and, right. and, and staying within that and, and having, being realistic and having a goal, having a plan to get to that goal. Uh, these are the key things that I always tell people. That's, that's amazing. So, you know, have that, like Robbie was saying, like, be realistic. We talk about, you know, like, no, like if you haven't played high school basketball yet, you're trying to go play pro, come on, you got to look and see, look at the situation. Are you really going to get there? You know, and Robbie said a key thing. He said self-awareness. Are you aware of yourself? Have self-awareness. Look inside yourself. Look at your situation. What have you done? So, Robbie, that was very valuable. And thank you for that because a lot of guys are lost, you know, and we hope this channel can provide them a place where they can find themselves and realize, you know what? I've never played pro or sorry, I've never played high school. So guess what? I might not make the pros. Let me go get a job and, you know, use those skills, the hard work, the dedication, the commitment that I was for training and put it into something else. And, you know, at least I don't get stuck and I have a career. So Dean, Dean, coach Dean, <laughs> family who's basketball. This is a big question for you because you played, now you're coaching, you got an organization, you know, what do you tell your players? You know, like, do you, do you tell them, you know, you're not going to make it? Do you tell them to give up? What do you tell your guys, Dean? Um, you know, kind of touching on what Robbie said a little bit, obviously he made some really, really great points. I think on a micro level, the self-awareness, where does it come from? Who's telling these kids that they can go to this level or play at that level? Are they telling themselves or is it a coach or a trainer or vice versa saying you can play pro and you can get to that level. Cause I think we need to surround ourselves first and foremost with like-minded individuals. You know, people are doing positive things. They're like, if you're hanging around, people are all saying I'm going to the league and I'm going to the NBA and, and, and fuck. Sorry, part of my language, F this or F that. I don't need this. I don't need to train. I'm training on my own. I'm doing my thing. Then obviously you're going to be thinking like that along those terms of lines. Right. Yep. But I think Robbie touched on a good point. The thing I tell kids is when I get a kid and he's fresh and he tells me, Coaching, I want to play college university basketball. Robbie hit, the, hit the, the nail on the head. It's the process. You're here right now. This is where you could be in five, six years. But are you willing to put in all that work? That's the process. And I tell kids, to get that level that Robbie was at, you got to really love that process. And that's all that little grinding in between getting in the gym, working out, right. doing the dribbling drills. And like Robbie says, doing the proper things. 
I see kids constantly telling me, coach, I was in the gym for four hours a day. I- I'm training now. I'm, I'm going to college. Yeah, but what were you doing for four hours a day? You could be in the gym for an hour and 15 minutes and working right. on efficient and effectively things right. and get and be done. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I think there's a really lost art in terms of what kids are working on, what's important at the next level um, in terms of the detail points. And I think the next thing for me personally, when it's time to give it up, it becomes an opportunity cost thing yeah. um, in terms of income versus experience. So, I mean, Robbie obviously was making an income. It was a profitable thing from a lot of these kids are just, uh, unfortunately, just wasting time. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, I mean, they're all that time they've been training and doing those things. You could get a job and start working. And like you said, use those skills to other things in life. Right. So it becomes an opportunity cost thing. I mean, you're playing basketball and you get to a point where it, you, you got to grow up and start making money. Right. Yeah. So I think that's really huge. But again, when I get a kid and he comes fresh to me, I always explain to him the process of how to get to that level or where you need to get to, are you working on the proper things? And I think right. like Robbie said, it just being self-aware. Yeah, you know, absolutely. testing your testing yourself against those higher level players. Am I good enough? Am yeah. I actually good enough to play against those guys? Right. Can I go to the states and play against those guys? Yeah. I think a lot of times for kids, what I usually do is throw them in a run with some higher level guys and let them get whipped for a little bit and make right. them wake up and say, "Wow!" Let them come back to me and say, "Wow, coach, I don't think I can handle that level." Yeah. Well, there you go. Now you need to continue to work on your game, right? So that's great. That's great. Yeah. So thank thank you for those that input, both you guys. You know, so. We, we want to be dreamers. We want to dream, but we also don't want to be delusional. We want to live in reality at the same time. So, Robbie, back to you now. Mm-hmm. Pro athlete. What are some things that you learn as a professional athlete? Because like I said before, high school is one level. College is another level in itself. And the pro athlete level is a completely different level. What have you learned being a professional athlete that is now helping you in business and in life? Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, once you leave university, and I tell this to people all the time, is once once you leave university, it becomes now the the business, the sport becomes the business of basketball. <laughs> yeah. So you, it it completely changes the way you're looked at because as an import going overseas, you're you know, it might sound not the best to say, but you're looked at as a commodity now. And, and now you are what, what you, what your value is, is what you can bring to them today. Exactly. You know, it doesn't matter anything else It's what you can do for them on the court. Right. And that's really all they care about. So they don't, you know, at the end of the day, no one really cares about you. You got to just get it done and you have one, one choice to, to make it. And you have to, you have to find a way to get there and you right. have to find a way to produce and produce results. And that's the only thing that matters because if you don't, you know, you could be the nicest guy in the world. They right. don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's a business, it's a business decision. Right. And that's what I've learned is that, you know, taking that onto the business world is that it's the same thing in the business world. It's a, it's a, it's a, what can you do for me world? You know, if right. I'm talking to people, it's like, and they're doing business with you. Well, you have to provide value to them. And that's yep. kind of what it comes down to is that what value are, are you providing other than, you know, just being there and being a friend, you know, that, that, that stuff is great, right. but when it comes down to business and it comes down to the business of basketball. It is a cutthroat world and you have to, you, you have to be able to navigate that, you know, and I'm not saying it's all cutthroat. I mean, there right. is ways you just have to wait, find a way to get it done. And then there's always time to, you know, have fun with your coaches or your, your, your clients or your business partner. <laughs> All that after at the end of the day, we have one goal, and that's the same thing when we're in university, right? <clears throat> when we're in high school, we're competing for championships. You know, people always talk about coaches, oh, this coach was you know rude to me or that. Well, no, they're trying to get somewhere, and that's how you get somewhere is to is to motivate each other and and to really get there, right? So yeah. I think you know, I learned a lot of things about leadership. Um, accountability right. was one thing. I mean, I can go on a, on, on a list, but I think accountability was one because being a professional athlete, um, you know, you have to have a lot of internal motivation because no one else is really doing it for you. You, You're doing everything for yourself. So you're not waking up, going to the gym. And Dean Dean said, I had a great point of view. If you don't love the process, it's really tough to get going. So, (laughs) you know, you have to really be loved. You have to love doing the things, the little things. And those are the things that, you know, obviously carry on into the business world because now, I mean, it shifts, right? Like you're not going to go into the gym every day to necessarily become a better you know, business person, I mean, obviously it's important, but, <clears throat> but, um, you know, there's, there might be things that you have to do differently now to become more successful in your, in your business, whatever, that's whatever great. that is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. And that's, that's fantastic. So you got to have that accountability and like both my brothers have said here today, love the process that you're going to go through. Cause it's not going to be easy. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of bumps on the road. So 
entrepreneurship, that's a whole thing in itself. Um, it's a challenging game to be in. So for someone starting out, because we, we see thousands of people start businesses, thousands of people start podcasts, thousands of people start different, different things. And the majority of people just don't make it. And that's the reality. You know, you two are making it and you're doing well and you're excelling. So for the young entrepreneurs out there that are trying to make it in the entrepreneurial world and business, what are some tips that you have for them or some advice, Robbie? Yeah, I mean, I think the the number one thing for anyone starting out is is number one, have a plan and have something that you're going to be able to have a plan to execute, right? So I know a lot of people, they talk about, well, I'm thinking about starting this. I'm thinking about doing this. You hear that all the time, right? <laughs> thinking is not really, I mean, thinking is just inaction. So you, you got to be able to have a plan. And then once you have a plan, take action on that plan. A lot of people yeah. just say, well, I want to do this. I've been thinking about this for the last three years. Right. Well, th there's three years have gone by and you haven't taken a single step forward. <laughs> so that doesn't really mean anything, right? So I try to motivate people to say, okay, well, if you have a be be have some intention towards your plans and and right. really execute that plan. And if you can't, right. you know, you can pivot and you find something else. But if you don't, if you just sit there and you don't have any any action, it, you won't go. You won't get anywhere with that, right? right. Yeah. And and the number two is surround yourself with mentors. Um, yep. There's mentors everywhere, right? right? Um, you know, whatever your field is, you know, go to the people that are doing well and, and talk right. to them. And they're more than happy to help out and say, hey, listen, I'm just starting out. Um, you know, so I've had people who reach out to me and I'm always willing to help out the young, the young generation of, of guys coming up or, um, you know, asking about, you know, how do I start this or how do I start right. this? And I'm always more than willing to, to help anybody I can. And I think it's an important tool to use, um, especially nowadays, um, you know, people, people get kind of caught up and they just say, well, I'm going to do everything myself. And it's not always the, right. the best way to go about it. Yeah, that's true. Don't, don't let the ego get the best of you when you, exactly. when you want to, don't, let, don't try to do it by yourself. There's people who don't try to reinvent the wheel. Someone's already done or has done what you're trying to get done. So find that mentorship. So thank you for that. I'd like to ask this question because coming out of grade 12, you know, we were all there at one point. Uh, we went to the next level. We all played to the next level. And Dean, I'm going to ask you this question as well, too, once I ask Robbie. So what are some tips that you would give a high school student graduating from grade 12 heading to, you know, college or university? Yeah, like, so, you know, when I talk to high school guys, I, I feel like there's a lot of pressure sometimes for younger guys to say, well, I need to have everything figured out by, by high school. I need to figure out a plan. Right. And, you know, looking back at it, I mean, you guys could probably speak on this too, is that yeah. it's not, majority of people don't have anything figured out by 12, right? To be honest. I'm still and figuring so, it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And, and life, that's life. We're all going to, we're always going to be like that. It's just, right. you know, there's too, we put too much pressure on ourselves to be like, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. Yeah. Well, you're young, you're 17 years old, you're 18 years old you know, take steps towards, you know, maybe what you want to do at the moment, but don't think that you have to have it figured out. You may want to go to university. You may not want to go to university, right. but just because you don't want to go to university, that doesn't mean that you sit around and play video games. But it means that, you know, you have to have some sort of a plan that you're, 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 you're taking action towards something. You might want to go into trades. You might want to go into a business. You might want to do, right. you, know, you might want to go into university. There's, there's so many options, but Right. You know, use, use, like I said, I'm going to touch again on, on mentors is, is talk to people around you that have had some success and maybe something that you want to do. And maybe you have a conversation with that person and, and they, and they tell you about it and they're like, Oh, I don't want to do this. And then yep. you have another conversation, put yourself out there as a high school student, you have all the resources in the world to go out yep. and, and just ask people. It's simple. Yep. It's free. It doesn't take much time. It's a, it's a quick, you know, just just research about about what you want to do and right. and that's how you figure out you got to take steps to get to where you want to get to right. but you um you know you have to put in the work right yeah that's great great answer robbie thank you so dean you are working with a lot of high school players right now you are in front of a lot of them you know robbie might not be showing these high school students houses to buy but dean you're definitely in front of a lot of high school students with your coaching so what do you what advice do you have for these young guys that are you know getting ready to go to, you know, the next level. Cause we've been there team. <laughs> right. So what are some advice that you have for them? Yeah, you know, on our side, I try to keep it very, very simple with them. And it's a skill. It's a skill that I, I see a lot of kids that they lack in this generation. It's very common. It's just communication skills. Yeah. You know, I always tell them and I, and it kind of keys on to what Robbie was saying, you know, building your network. You always hear me say your network is your net worth. 
Um, it's so easy going to the you know, university to communicate with your teachers and communicate with your coaches. And a lot of times when you do that, you build relationships with people. And then like Robbie says, later on in life, those people can become mentors. You can ask questions to those people. But again, it comes through communication, building relationships with people. And again, like I've said before in our last, our last podcast, Marcel, building relationships with people takes time. Yeah. It's not uh, over one lunch or one coffee kind of thing. It takes time to build relationships with people. Right. So I always tell kids when you're going to university, build a relationship with your teacher. Right. Build relationships with your TAs. Build relationship with the, your peers in your classes. Build relationships with your coaches. Build relationships with the with the academic advisors. Build relationships with people over the university. So when you need help and it's time to ask a question, they know who you are. They're putting a name to the face. Vice versa, the same thing with your teachers. When right. they're looking at a test and they say, oh, Dean, perfect. He comes to my class every day on time. He builds a relationship with me. I'm going to help him out a little bit. As right. opposed to, I don't know who Robbie Sohoto is. He's ever come up to me one time in class. He sits right. in the back of the class. He's got his headphones in. He's got his phone in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Little things like that make a big difference. And I'll be the first to say it. In the last three years of my life, I really keyed in on trying to communi- be a better communicator and build relationships with people. Yeah. And relationships that I built when I was in high school are coming back to me, help me now in life. So just like Robbie was saying, continue to build your network. And then those right. people become mentors later in life. And like as Robbie said, it's free. I can always call Robbie and ask a business question. You yep. can always call our, our mutual friends of ours and ask for a business question or something related in that area of life, right? So again, for me personally, I see these kids every day and I see on the basketball court, communication. communication. I mean, they can text and talk on their phone, but can they have a verbal call, a conversation with right. somebody without looking at their phone, right? And I said this in our last podcast. It's the last thing I'll say. Whenever I meet someone for the first time, I put my phone down and I try to make that person yep. feel everything, feel super, super yep. special. So then- Later on, maybe a year or two years later from then, if I need help or I need to ask a question, I can call and key in on that, right? Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's that's some solid points, Dean. Thank you very much for adding that value. So back to Robbie now. You know, and we're, we're, we're coming near the end of the show. Um, we have two questions remaining on the show. You know, we're all on this life journey, right? We're on our own journey. We're all on our own little walk. So obviously there's things that you, Robbie, have been through in your life that you could help someone else on. And I believe learning from everyone because everyone's been through some, something. So what are some life lessons you've learned that have helped you that you would think could help other people out there? Could be anything. Yeah, I mean, I think the, one of the biggest keys that I, uh, and you may have heard this before, but I, I really truly hold this to heart. And I, you know, kind of materialize this in the university, you know, through coaches, but is the way we do anything is the way we do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, I really, really think that that hits a lot of life in general, you know, right. whatever it is you're trying to do. So I, I took the same approach that I would be on the basketball court and I would apply it to everything else in life because right. if you can't handle, you know, simple adversity on the basketball court, you most likely won't be able to ha- handle simple adversity off the court too. That's so right. it, it, it carries over, you know, and I would talk to you and, you know, Dean could touch on this with, with coaches and everything too, is, you know, you see the kids that are always looking to, to blame and, and point the finger at others. You know, we go back to accountability, you know, everything comes down to you. You can control what you can control. And that's another thing is that control what you can control. Right. And forget about things that you can't control because that's you're going right. to drive yourself crazy going, going, going crazy about things that you can't control anyway that's right. on the court. Do right. with things that you can control. If you can control something, go out and do it. Go out right. and control it. Yep. And then that allows you to be feel more control into your in your life as well, too, right? Instead of focusing on external factors, focusing right. on things that you have no, you know, you can't manipulate either way. So right. worry about yourself. Stop worrying about other people, you know, and, and really have that focus on yourself because ultimately that's what's going to carry you to, uh, to, to where you want to get to. Strongly believe in that, and I live in that way, Robbie. Thank you so much for that. Sorry, sorry, Marcel. I just wanted to touch on. I just wanted to touch on what Robbie said. Yeah. Um, I think to add to what Robbie said, I think it also a key point was organization. I think you can key on that. Robbie can key on that. We can all key on that as business owners in our life. A big part of it is being organized. I think Robbie hit on the head. I mean, if we stay organized and our life is organized and everything yeah. set up, our yeah. mind will fall the same exactly. as well. So I think yeah. that's really key is what to add to what Robbie said there as well. That's yeah, that's good. You can control your internal, but you can't control the external. All right. So mindset, this, this is Marcel mindset TV. So Robbie, I want to ask you, cause our mindset is everything, right? Like what kind of mindset do you have? Like Dean has a winning mindset. 
Robbie has this winner's mindset, this winner's mentality. If you listen to what he said, it's first class, first place, winner mindset. He's, he's focused. He's disciplined. He's determined. He's got goals. He's striving. He's thriving. So what does mindset mean to you, Robbie? And how do you keep a strong mindset? Yeah, mindset means a lot of different things to me. I, I mean, it's not necessarily one thing, but I think Stability is is a, is a very important thing in our lives, right? Like we were surrounded by chaos every day in, in, our, in our life. Some people have more, some people have less. Right. Um, but if we're able to stay here at all times, right. you're, you're a lot you're a lot more equipped to be able to handle the the ups and downs in life. You know, the the ones I always see is that you know if you're riding that roller coaster the whole time, the ups and downs are going to weigh you down, and, <laughs> and it's going to be a lot harder to right. to handle. So you know, mindset, I think, you know, it, it, to me, it means having the focus and the energy to deliberately handle the day-to-day -day life, right? Yes. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to, to get yourself, you know, best equipped to, to handle it. I, I think one of the biggest things is also taking care of your, your physical health, because a lot of people don't, they neglect that. I, I think staying in shape, you know, doing whatever you need to do, eating yep. right, you know, fueling your body, that, that shapes the way you, you handle your day-to-day -day life and that affects your mental health as well too, right? And a lot of people don't think, oh, I can just eat whatever I want. I can just have any kind of a lifestyle and not think that it has an impact on your mental health, but it does. Everything yeah. is tied together. So oh. again, that touches back on the way you do anything yeah. is the way you do everything. So, yes. <laughs> you know, so I know we're talking a lot about, you know, the same things, but I think it's, I think it's truly important to, to focus and deliberately focus on that and, ha and have intention around it, right? Because it's okay. not just, you're going to wake up every day and, and life is going to be so easy every single day. It's going to, there's going to be a lot of things that happen uh, yeah. to you in different ways. And you just have to be equipped to, Hey, this, this happened today. Well, I'm going to deal with it. And how am I going to deal with it? How am I going to tackle it? Right. So, right. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's kind of one of, that's the keys of, of, of having a strong mindset is, is being right. able to handle things like that. Right. I love that. I love that. This, that, this, this whole episode, like we, we're coming to an end, we're wrapping up the show, but this was truly, truly inspirational. Me, myself, I learned so much. I, Robbie brought so much value. Dean brought so much value. Like, you guys are two professionals. You guys are going to continue to grow, develop, and even get better and better. So, Robbie, I want to ask you, how can people reach you? Because I know once people see this, they're going to want to reach you. Maybe not even for real estate, for mentorship. <laughs> but, you know, you're a real estate and, you know, it's business and, you know, that's the focus. But... How can someone reach you, our Toronto people, or if anybody out there in Calgary is viewing this episode? Yeah, I mean, nowadays it's easy. I mean, you can send a DM on, on Instagram or, or Facebook if people use it. Um, you know, my phone number, you can, they can always reach out to you. And I, I can always, <laughs> I'm always happy to, to leave that as well. I and mean, you can go to my website, robbiezahoda.com and right. my phone number there as well too. So there's a lot of avenues to be able to reach me. And, um, right. you know, I'm always happy to connect with people that, uh, that need some help. Fantastic, fantastic. And Coach Dean, how can those players, those athletes, maybe some guys in Toronto actually want to do virtual training with you? Maybe I don't know if you're doing that yet. How can people reach you, Coach Dean? Yeah, same forms as Robbie. You can reach us on our website, which is familyhoops.ca. We have a little uh, box in the bottom of our, our main page there where you can reach out and send me a message directly. Um, same thing, if you want to reach out to me via phone, you can reach out to Marcel and he'll give you my phone number and we can communicate that way. But anyone knows me, I'm always one to help any kids if they contact me. So just feel free to contact me, ask me any drills, any mentorship, kind of things like that. Perfect. All right. So we are wrapping up the show here. Was there anything that you two gentlemen would like to say before we wrap up the show here? All right. That's good. So remember, guys, subscribe to the channel. Click that like button below because believe me, these are episodes that you do not want to miss out on. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and get tuned in. So I want to thank both of my guests for coming on to the show today. Brought nothing but knowledge and gems and jewels that everyone is going to learn from because we all need mentorship. And if you're not getting a mentor because you can't afford one, you can tune into this channel. And Robbie just dropped a bunch of jewels today that you're going to be able to implement to bring into your life to change your life and so did coach dean both of these two individuals brought some stuff today that can help you on your life so thank you guys because i'm gonna go and watch this back and learn myself thank you two guys for coming on the show 
I'm truly humbled to be in both of your presence. You guys are going to make something great in this life and this world, and you're doing something extremely good. I wish you guys nothing but prosperity and the best of health and best of luck in both of your businesses. Take care, guys. Thanks, my man. Thank Appreciate you, you man. Yeah. All right. Take care. Take care. Take care. Thanks, guys.